Hello everyone. I am super excited tonight to be bringing you a conversation with Hani Malamed. Um, Hani, I actually got to know Hani a few years ago now. It's It's been a while. It's been a while. And Hani is this just absolutely indomitable personality person, personality. I, I, kept, I don't want to refer to her even as a personality. She's this absolutely incredible person who is out there in the world talking to people about the fact that she doesn't have children. Um, she's been married for 14 years and she just, she's open about it and she has this incredibly positive attitude about her life, about taking it as it comes, whatever God, whatever Hashem. She's been actually our one of our most requested, not redos, but like do again. I think redo is the same thing as do again. Is redo the same thing as do again? Okay. Mo one of our most requested, do it again. <laughs> Have another conversation with her because people just absolutely love you and you just have this absolutely incredible spirit and i'm so excited to be chatting with you again tonight not in a redo in a part two how's that actually but that was a much better way of describing it that was so better. great so nice to see you it's, it's so nice to see you too okay so give everyone a a background for those those people who don't know you who have never met you before either in person or on social media tell people who you are um sure hi i'm khani malamid originally from brooklyn born and bred um always an out of town or at heart now live in denver colorado um but wishing i was living in israel um and like the the flyer said been married for 14 years in august um don't have kids yet um and uh, living life to the fullest because that's what you should be doing no matter what stage in life you are at and there's no point to be um wasting it away because you're waiting for the next thing that um is supposed to be the next thing um that they say that you're supposed to be doing next but um that's just like made up live your life to the fullest my friends yes 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 and yes okay i i really i want to get into it and i want to i, I want to like dig a little deeper into where this this attitude where this th this incredible just like wherewithal of like i know I, 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 life I, hasn't been the way I thought it was going to turn out and I'm going and I'm chugging and whatever. So, so let's like, t just take us back. I know we did this a little bit the last time we spoke, but take us back. So, you know, you grew up in Brooklyn. Talk to us about your dating life, because I know you also did not get married when you were 20. Um, talk to us about your dating life and just even your attitude in, in, that rate, in, in that realm, because there are so many people that are still waiting for that piece of their life to start. Yeah, sure. Um, my mom is actually on here. And if you ask her, she thought I was going to get married the second I got off the plane from seminary. Um, there was a sale on Macy's for like pots and pans and she bought me pots and pans that eventually she used for Pesach one year. Um, because, wow. <laughs> you know, wow. Um, I didn't get, I didn't get engaged until the ripe old age of 26. Um, that's ripe old, old age. Yeah, 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 exactly. Exactly. Um, and I mean, I, I dating was dating. Um, I didn't, I kind of enjoyed it. I never really had any like crazy experiences um, or crazy like horror dating stories. Um, and I went to undergrad, went to law school, worked, traveled, did whatever I wanted to do. I mean, um, and wasn't just waiting around, which I think some people do or think they're supposed to do for some reason. I don't know why. I don't know where that mentality comes from and i know that in our 
society um it's almost like you know you are um you're you're not the adult or you're not the the grown-up yet until you get married in a way i even hate saying it because it's like such insanity and i can't i can't say i remember one time being at like a family affair and i i was almost i i'm pretty sure i was at the designated supposed to be at the kids table even though it's older than the married people who are at the adults table and it's just like a our society our community has to like just change you think by now it would have i mean things are changing and i mean i love the stuff that you you were doing with tapora um and all the things she's, she's, she's been amazing. doing and it's great um i mean i do a lot of shidduchim too and it's just um it, it's crazy out there it's it's i don't know um i let, it, it, but anyways in my my um story with you know waiting around to get married there was no waiting around live my life did my stuff and uh, that's my message to people like don't don't wait to live your life like our life is so short what are you waiting for um and- I, I i so so can i can i just dig i i i keep saying the word dig but like i really want to try to like bring out some yep. of this was it you know I, I, as I know, because I have family members now in the dating process and the Shadokhan process, it is hard to watch other people, especially your age or even younger. And as you just, you know, shared with that story where you at this wedding, right? It is definitely, it is not easy for anyone, regardless of, you know, what kind of like armor, so to speak, that you have. It is not easy to watch other people have the thing that you don't have. And the, sort of the first stage, quote unquote, of adulthood is getting married, according to our community. Again, we all know that that's not correct, but I'm just using it in community terms right now. Um, where, like, was there ever this, like, oh my gosh, like, I, 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 like, I feel so out of place. How come it's not my turn? How come? Or was it? Like, did you hear from your parents? Like, like I'm trying, like, where did the messaging come from of just go and lead your life? Like, did you have other friends that you're doing this with? Were you forging this path alone? I, I, and I'm asking specifically because so much of that is applicable to the next stage of life. And so I'm trying to, like, give people the tools and, and give them some of the pieces that they can implement in their lives, regardless of whatever it is that they might be waiting for. Yeah, for sure. Um, I definitely had um, single friends always. Um, I always had friends that were in the same stage of life. Um, so it wasn't like, oh, all my friends are married and like, oh, there's they're doing their thing and I'm just here alone so I'm not going to be doing anything. Um, I always recommend to people, like if all your friends get married, branch out. You need to have those friends in your stage of your life. The same way I have a bunch of friends who um, I've met from various Shabbatons or different things that don't have kids yet. Um, and I don't know where I would be without them. And they're amazing. Um, so I highly recommend. And so I do think that my friends were in school with me, vacation with me, went out to eat. Like we always did stuff together. Not to say that you can't do stuff with married friends. Of course you can. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm just saying, um, and were, did I have moments or times where it's like, why is it them? Why is it not me? Duh. Like, of course. <laughs> I mean, who's like, I'm not fooling anybody. Do I still have times now? Of course. Um, it's just a matter of, of like, okay, this is my situation. Cry it out. Do what you got to do. And then bounce out of it. Like, it, it, it's just what you have to do um because people ask me all the time like i, I know this is gonna sound like the craziest thing because i think it's the craziest thing and people ask me like how do i walk around like smiling and stuff which i never i don't even understand the question i don't get it I'm, I'm like am i supposed to be walking around crying like what am i supposed to be doing I, <laughs> so um yeah like i like 
like for those of you who are just listening to this and because at some point um this is also going to go on to our podcast if you would be listening to this the the expression on my face right now is one of like shock and my mouth is open so i'm like oh yeah okay I, I mean, this yeah is true i'm not like making this i don't even know how i would make it up but yeah. like legit people have asked me how to like i walk around like being happy and i'm like why would i not be happy like, I mean, I have my health. I have an amazing family. Um, I get to do stuff. I have a, a wonderful community. Like, what's not to be happy about? Right. Nobody's life is perfect. Your life is, nobody's life is perfect. I have my peckle. I have my package. Everyone has their thing. Um, and if there's times that there's hard, that it's hard, totally. But um, that's not how we live life. That's not how we move on. Like, I, what, are you going to curl up in bed and just yeah. stay there all day? Yeah. No. Um, yep. but where does this come from? I mean, you, you initially asked me yeah. that. I, I don't know. Um, we, we can say it's my parents, you know, go you guys. Um, <laughs> um, but I mean, to me, this is like common sense. Um, as maybe as like crazy as I might, I, I don't know. <laughs> it, it, it's not, it's not crazy. It's just, I think, you know, I, I think that the root of maybe some of the questions are they, like, how can you how can you be walking around with a smile on your face is I think for some people, the idea, let's say we're only talking about this period in your life right now, like the pre marriage place, but obviously it applies to, to now as well. I think some people place mm -hmm. such importance on that, that it's hard for them to see anything else, that they could have good health, they could have a job, they could have wonderful friends, they could be able to travel, they could be able to do all those things. But it's some people think that it's meaningless unless they have blank, fill in the blank, whatever that is, right? And yeah. and, and people can't see the other side to it. Yeah, um, that kills me. I really feel bad for anybody that is living like that. Um, and if somehow I can help you and you're listening to this, please message me. But like, or if anybody's telling you that, that you're not worthy enough because you're not at that next level, you're not married or you don't have kids yet, like get those people out of your life. Um, you don't want that negativity or that like bubba myself. Yeah. I don't know how to say that in yeah. English. Um, it, with you, anywhere near you, just get away from it. Yeah. You're worthy, no matter what stage in life you are, to have with, everything you want. You are worthy as an individual. You are worthy with or without a partner. You are worthy with or without a baby. You are worthy with or without the number of children that everybody else in your community has. You are worthy whether or not you got this job, you have this house, you have that. Like, right. I mean, we could go on and on and on. Um, yeah. Also, like, these are things that are like, in my opinion, out of our control. I mean, granted, of course, you know, you still have to date and you still have to like kind of put yep. yourself out there. Like, same thing with babies and you maybe you have to go to doctors or whatever it is. Yep. But like in reality, it's in Hashem's hands. It's in God's hands. And like, so are you God? You're leave it up to him. You know, when have Hashem be your best buddy and then just you, you do you and leave it up to him. I, I I love it. Okay, let let's move let let's move like to the next stage now. So, you uh, you know went through this that period of your life. You met Dave. You got married, which I love. I don't remember. I don't know if it was your mother or someone else. Someone was someone wrote in the comments before like, he's the best. Like he's exactly the right match for you. He's amazing. <laughs> like which is like it's just so like warm yeah. and, and 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 wonderful and amazing. Um. And so talk to us. I love this. How did such a young person, Perry is saying, how did such a young person become so smart? So the yeah, th this is person you. So no, no. So Perry, so Perry is a woman. She actually was on um an Insta Live and on um we put her also on the podcast. Her her thoughts were um her, the title of her um talk was about grandparents, about how she she isn't a grandmother. And so she's writing here, she's just um you know, she, she talks a lot about that, that angst and the, like, it's not only about 
people in their life who don't have children, but what about the next stage of life when you don't have grandchildren? Um, so she's saying here, she's a compliment to you. She said, how did, how did such a young person, you, Hani, how did you become so smart? I, I, uh, I mean, thank you. Thank you for thinking I'm so young. I so appreciate it. Uh, um, and, and, you, and you are. So, okay, so take us to the next stage. So you got married, and I'm sure you thought, just like everybody else, that you know, you got married, and so everything else would just be easy. Then the next stage would be easy. Sure, sure. And, just like everybody. And, I, and then tell us, like, when you realized things were not going according to plan, and then your mindset, Dave's mindset, and like walk us through, walk us through the beginning stages of like, let's call it the first four years, five years. Um, sure. When did we realize? I mean. Every month we realized that um, nothing was happening. Um, it wasn't a shock. Um, and then we um, did the regular, just going to like regular doctors initially doing, you know, initial workup and things. And then progressing after that to bigger and better or whatever. <laughs> um, and, you know, getting involved with other organizations and having them guide us to, you know, pro the proper channels. Um, um, and I mean, by year, I say year three, it's, we basically knew where we were, which is where we are. Like, I mean, yeah. um, from year three, four, five, um, I say from, yeah, like year four ish, like, like we were basically in the same place we, I would say we are now ish at the same yep. place I, I don't um yep. I, and again i want to be very clear i am not asking you for details about no. what's going on it is it's none of my business it's no one else's business it's it's more like what i'm what i would love for you to share is how how you each dealt with hearing different pieces of news and how how you bolstered each other and how how you how you initially got through it and how you continue to go through it now yeah okay so um let's see how um and i'm just grabbing my, my water yeah so it, it's right here i'm just but go ahead <laughs> um i mean it was pretty i would say you know devastating um absolutely um there was a doctor that we wa that we were seeing at a point um that we literally lived less than 10 minutes from his office and gave us like really bad news over the phone and i till today i really i still have issues with him that like why didn't you just call me into your office versus over the phone um and yeah. this was like a from guy <laughs> yeah. um um i i, I think we i, I I think Dave is definitely much more, we're both emotional, but he's definitely, I, I probably keep things much more in than he does. Like, um, he's definitely much more like wanting to talk about things. And sometimes like, I'm not, um, and I'm just like, let's just like, it is what it is. And like, let's just move on and we'll like figure things out and, um, do things that way. I was definitely, we got very involved with other organizations and, you know, we were involved. Yeah. Um, I, which are incredible you tell, tell us about them. oh yeah. okay we got involved with a time and went to their shop tones and i if somebody is dealing with fertility stuff and has the opportunity to go to a shop tone it is a must um people who I, I every so often i hear of people who don't never heard of a time and never been to a shop tone i'm like i don't know how you live i could i if i didn't have my friends that I've met from a time who are like my, one of my closest friends now, um, who are some of my closest friends now. Like, I, I, I don't know where I would be like for reals. Um, tell, me, tell, tell me more. What, what is the power? Like, wh what are these Shabbatones about? Like, who do they bring together? Like I, th this is, this is important to share because we're talking about a support system and this is your support system. So share. Right. Yeah. Yeah. I, I mean, so, I mean, they have like, support groups the same way you have amazing support groups and other organizations have support groups but there's nothing like spending real time like a whole shabbos with people who are exactly in your boat granted obviously everybody has different diagnosis and different issues whatever but at the end of the day 
nobody has the kids. So um, there's just in, in most of most people's lives and experiences and, and any kind of function anybody normally would go to, even just like going to Shulam Shabbos, you're barely going to be surrounded by like by people like you who are dealing with fertility stuff, you know, which thank God. But um, so you are there's they, they have like um it's just beautiful they set it up gorgeously so you feel like you're a queen like you're coming into this uh, this event that was made special for you and like wow you are this special person um that this is a made for you um and you're sitting in like smallish tables by the meals and you get to know everybody and you depending and you don't have to open up you can you don't have to and you just get to meet incredible people and there's um you know different lectures um and uh, a lot of chizok and a lot of um talks about you know giving strength to people um but also like practical stuff for some people and it just makes you feel normal that's you know you're not the on man out like when you are going to you know a community chanukah party purim party going to shul on shabbos you are you are the the norm at this like Shabbaton versus being the like I don't want to say outcast but being the outsider, right? Um, the person who the person who's different as opposed to the person who who is you know part of the, the mainstream as opposed to person on the outside. Yeah. But the same way how I said before that when if somebody's single and a lot of their friends already got married and you have to like seek out other single friends, the same way if you are you have friends and all your if if you don't have kids and all your friends have kids, you, you have to have friends who don't have kids. Um, you have to get connected. Um, and it's there and it's available. Um, and it's not hard to do. It's not like you like have to yep. roam the streets and exist. And, um, it's just so worthwhile. And I just have tremendous high cars to to them. I mean, every organization, um, that has all these different functions and, and it's, they're they're phenomenal and i highly recommend getting in contact with any of them i don't know if other organizations have shabbatones um i'm most familiar with yeah yeah no i i mean i i don't know of others either but you know shabbatones for for those of you who um who don't know shabbatones are basically um, weekend programs um, that are around Shabbos. So that's why they're called Shabbatones. Um, and their a time actually is the originator of these, these Shabbatones specifically for different groups who are dealing with different kinds of fertility challenges. Right. Um, and they, they're, they're, it, it's a thousand percent, right? Everything that Khani said, you know, there is something while there, there is tremendous power in everything that is done in terms of support and virtual support is like, like if you have no support, virtual support is better than absolutely no support. But there's something about sitting in the room with someone. Uh, it's, it's what I always say, like, you know, when we do our our community programs, our awareness programs, and like I get to sit and interact with people face to face. Like there, there's such power in that, um, and it's and it's tremendous. But I, I want to get back to so you you you've built these these like these segments, the, these pieces of support for you to help get you through. So okay, so friends and and a support system in terms of people. What else? What are the other things that you do? That that just keep that smile on your face and allow you allow you to just keep marching on. And I think some of that probably came from some of that muscle that you needed to you know exercise a bit when you were single. Um, um yeah, sure. And also not to um, take away from like your other friends who in your community or from wherever who have kids and like yeah, open up to them too if you're able to or your family, whoever you're comfortable with. Um, but also having outlets, um, I also, uh, I, I mentioned before, I do a lot of like matchmaking shidduchim and, you know, I de definitely like put my whole self in doing that. And I find that doing that really gives me tremendous joy and tremendous, um, I don't know. I don't know what to, um, just a sense, sense of accomplishment, sense of, sense of pride. Yeah. Um, so I think whether that's volunteering and doing something that 
really fulfills you, whether even if it's just reg your regular job that you love or some sort of hobby, um, something that you can really just like sink yourself into. Um, not to, not that it's like your, not that you're hiding from your stuff because you're not. It's always going to exist. Um, but I think it's important to have other outlets or even it could be anything you could go shopping I, I don't care what your thing is um but something that will you know definitely distract you and occupy you and you're not thinking about your your struggle in life everybody has something so you know it's just um finding that right thing that works for you and you know, and if that's also like talking to a therapist, go to that therapist, you know, if it's talking, but if it's also actually, I, I'm more into like doing things than constantly talking. Um, and so I think it's, it's important to actually be physically doing something. And whether that's like going back to school, if that's something you're passionate about, and getting a, you know, a different, you know, being involved in um, another career or just for fun. I don't know people like school. Yep. So yeah, I, that's, I don't, let I, me be clear. <laughs> I, I'm like, I'm agreeing, but no, no for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and I say just live your life and don't be waiting um, for things to just fall into your lap and you have to like make it happen. Get involved in your community, be involved with your school. Like yep. there's always something to do um and so just be productive in life because like listen Hashem put you here into this world and God wants you to be productive um and sitting around for something that is out of your control um it just seems like a waste to me and you have to live you look I I, I think I I want to be very um ver very clear about what Connie is saying for her oh yeah the way Everything, yeah that's my I, <laughs> yes, 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 yes. For her, the way she copes with what her life has given her, what life has given her, in that so many things are wonderful, but there is a piece that is lacking. She does not have children yet. And again, I'm also still using the yet because I'm also a hopeful person. And we're going to get to that in a second. Um, the, for her, she, like, she wants she she gets involved she gets her hands dirty she wants she wants a feeling of accomplishment she wants to be busy with things busy creating busy doing busy like thinking about the next and i think that there is it, there is absolutely tremendous power in that where if you can't create a child at this moment whatever it is you the person out there it is you know, to get involved in other ways of giving back to other people, to causes that you believe in, to different passion projects, exactly as Connie was saying. Like, I think there's there's such tremendous power in feeling fulfilled because at the end of the day, it's about internally feeling fulfilled that you feel like you've done some good in the world, that you, you've you put something out into the world that you can feel proud of. And so there are other ways to do that. I mean, I, I, I hear... A lot from people who don't have children, I hear that they um, they teach, they foster, they adopt, they work in homeless shelters, they work in food kitchens, like other ways of helping people and, and sort of mothering them in ways that are a little bit different than the classic, like mothering a child and mothering your own child. I I just want to say something that I think sometimes people don't realize and the more I'm hearing you speak, I just want to clarify something. Not to say that I am sure everybody has a busy, fulfilling life. And I know some people think that if you don't have kids yet, that you're not busy all the time. And like, so you're always available to be doing X, Y, Z the same way. Like, oh, if you don't have kids yet, you must be like a cabillionaire. Um, so of I just course. want to not. Yeah, like <laughs> right um that um not to take away from whatever you're already doing and busy with and especially if somebody's busy with like treatments that's a full-time job you you do that forget about anything else and focus on that and that's your job um Absolutely. and i just want to 
to like clarify that point that I'm not trying to say that I'm sure nobody's they're not nobody's busy because they don't have kids. That's insane. Um, but I just think you just also, you know, you need that uh, fulfillment if that's not what you already have in your current state. That's all. Yes. Yes. And, and I'll, I'll add to that. I think not only fulfillment, but I think there also needs to be for all of us, but especially for those of us that are still waiting and hoping there also has to be that element of taking care of yourself from a mental health standpoint. And, you know, whether it's exactly what you were talking about, whether it's therapy, whether it's exercise, whether it's doing things that nurture you that have nothing to do with like feeding this desire or need to sort of give back, but just walking in nature, shopping, as you were saying, you know, anything frivolous, whatever it is, but if it's meaningful to you and it helps feed your soul and if it helps feed your neshama and give you joy, that is a tremendous gift and that's something that also needs to happen for each one of you out there yeah this was all just about like if there's somebody feeling down and just like and and sitting in a corner for no reason and and just feeling bad for themselves these are the people that i'm saying you need to find something fulfilling you don't have to do anything like if you are fulfilled you have your nine to five you come home you do whatever great because it's a hate like don't don't listen to me <laughs> yep i am just saying don't wallow in your um misery that you are causing to yourself yep uh you have to find stuff to not be in that a thousand percent a thousand percent now let's let's now talk about hope and i i think for some people hope is a really hard word because it's like it it gives them it, it almost like gives them something to hold on to and they've been disappointed over and over again so hope is something that they don't relate to anymore and i think especially for people who have been disappointed year after year after year hope is just it's almost like a dirty word it's like people can't handle it um, and so, you know, when you and I were having this conversation and I said to you, hey, Khani, I think we need to talk again. I want you to come on. And you were like, oh, my God, I can't believe you want to do this again. Yes, I do. <laughs> the people want you. Um, and we were talking about a title of what should we title this conversation? And we were toying around with, like, different ideas. I was like, well, you know, is, should we say you're not a mom? Other? Should we say, I'm not a mother yet? Should we say, I still hope to be a mother? Like we were, we were toying around with different framings of what the title should be. And I immediately, as I, as I was like writing and we were texting back and forth, we both settled on that there should be, there should be hope in the title. It should be, I still hope to be a mother. I still want to be a mother. I still, I'm hoping that that piece is still out there. So I, I'm wondering for you now in 14 years, talk to, talk to me about hope. Talk to us about hope. Talk to us about, you know, how, what hope, what role hope has in your life? How do you think about it? What are the times that it feels like like you can't access it. What are the times that it feels really strong? Like just give us a window into the way you think about hope. Um, sure. Um, I think hope is necessary to, to live and to breathe. Um, I think that without it, the same way I kind of believe, I feel bad for people who don't believe in God. Um, I, I don't know how they live and like everything's, on them how that seems so scary to me so to me having hope is just like breathing and i i don't know if i i believe like that you could give up hope i mean I, of course you can but why um i also don't think that it's our place to especially because this is to me 
all in God's hands, basically. Um, and he could do anything. Like, I mean, we've been davening for Mashiach for three billion years. Um, it just, and, it just explain, explain that piece for one second. Explain, explain what that means. Davening for Mashiach? Yeah. Um, praying for the Messiah to come, that we've davened for that three times a day um, for since forever and ever. Um, just don't remember how long and my parents paid a lot of money for tuition so i don't want to sound too bad for um <laughs> it's all good it's all good it's all good keep going <laughs> but yeah i mean like listen if we want we're praying for this humongous huge thing for mashiach for the messiah to come um and if we believe god can do that he can give you the baby he could do anything um i mean you know they say find your match is like you know splitting of the sea um and that seems like maybe easier than you know the messiah <laughs> so um yeah I, I i i think granted when if somebody's going through let's say a treatment and then it doesn't go well um and you're heartbroken as you should be um and you're upset at god because why wouldn't you be a, a million percent and you want you you want to take that break and you're not jumping right into necessarily doing another treatment right away i don't know if like and you're devastated and then you maybe feel like down take that time you that's normal and that's how you probably should be and if you're upset at god i always say that's great that means you have a relationship with god yep and i mean i'm far from any person out there i'm nobody um i just think it's important to try and harness that relationship with god as as much as you can. Um, so I think when you feel that connection and closeness um, and you give everything over to him, there's a sense of relief. There's a sense of hope. There's just a, 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 a you could breathe easy, easier in my opinion. Um, but is it normal for times? And did I have times where like, oh, I was pissed or I was not, who I necessarily am today, you know, several years ago, and did this, did it take time to get here? Yeah. Um, and, but I, I, I think it's important and I think it's worth uh, people trying to get to it. Um, and, uh, I, I think that if somebody is trying to live a fulfilling life, hope is part of it. Um, and again, if you have those moments where you're just down and you're just in a field position because that's all you can do right now, okay, that's all you can do. Um, but eventually you'll get out of that and hopefully you will get the strength to continue on. And the, I, 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 I think we have prayer for a reason and we have, you know, there's a whole concept of bitachon and amuna, and you know, we, you know, as as Jews, we believe in this for for a good reason. And if we didn't, like, I don't know, it just seems like what a not great place, great way to live. Um, and um, I don't know if I even answered the yeah. question. I feel no. like I no, 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 you did. I, I mean, I, I think, I think the the you know, the pieces, the pieces that I sit with and, and that I hear from people is that hope is, hope is hard for a lot of people to access that, that it is, it is just really, really, really difficult because they've been disappointed over and over and over again. So it's almost better to not have hope for them. Like that, that, for them, and I'm saying, I'm using their words, I'm not saying it from, from my perspective, that they feel that they almost have to put hope sort of over here, like on the back burner someplace else because their heart is too fragile. It, it It's just, it's been broken too many times and it's easier to just not think about it because they're worried about this being disappointed over and over again. I, like, how do you, how do you handle that? Um, I think life's a marathon and not a sprint. And I think um, day by day, um, you 
get the strength and you get better the same way like any anybody who has you know anybody uh, god forbid somebody's in mourning yep. and you, know, you have a whole seven days of shiva a whole you know a year of um whatever yep. um, so I, I i i think that time um it doesn't necessarily heal all but i think you're able to you know move on and and process with time um I think Khani now, 14 years later versus Khani, you know, from married for four years is a completely different Khani. Um, and so, you know, I, I can't expect some, and I would never think that somebody who's been, who's very new at this would be like me um, at all, because this took time. Yeah. Um, and nobody should, you know, get to being, you know, hopefully everybody's journey is very short yeah. and everyone gets you know where they want to be at the right time but um i do believe in timing and everything is happens at the right time um and sometimes you don't have control over that and that, like i said you know god has a, a time plan for us we're on his schedule he's not on ours um but sometimes you're in that rut and you can be in that rut for a little bit that it's just normal and that's fine and i hope you have that support system whoever is going through whatever like that the treatment that failed the adoption that didn't go through i mean there's so many things the surrogacy that didn't happen um and everyone thinks like oh like why don't you just adopt why don't you just do this or that like pe don't listen to those people people <laughs> um yeah people just don't know what they're saying and it's really a, like such a shame um that people put these things on people and they think they're making their lives easier and it's not um listen this 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 struggle this fertility thing i mean the the most amazing women in the world are imahus our foremothers yep. struggled with this yep. versus the other thing it didn't say they had cancer yep. they didn't say they had to take away from that god forbid yeah um yeah 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 they they dealt with fertility and if god decided that these amazing holy women should have this struggle there must be something with this um not to say that this takes away the pain and the hardness um but it's you know trying to put things into perspectives and to um you know you are in a spe in my opinion in a very special category of people um and 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 hope is not easy but it, it comes and hopefully um and and if if you decide if somebody decides like i i it's so hard to hope but like but it, you still like move on and you will do another treatment or trying to do whatever it is okay i mean it'll come but keep moving forward however that gets you to move forward um and I, and I and I also just want to you know just just also shout out to the people out there that have made the decisions for physical health or mental health or whatever other reasons that that they, they're stopping that they're they're not pursuing anymore because that is a also a very real and difficult struggle that people go through and that they and then society sort of has a lot of expectations on them where they say like you know why didn't you try more why didn't you try harder why didn't you try for longer why didn't you try this that and whatever and and i you know just as a, you know sharing this as a reminder that we don't know all of the things that are going on in people's lives and we need all to hold space for every person, regardless of whatever decision they make, and to recognize that they're doing what's right for them. Um, oh yeah, I, I don't, God forbid, I totally did not mean, I just wanna I, clarify. I know, I know, okay. I, I, I know, and everybody else knows also, I, I okay. just wanted to add that one point. Um, oh yeah, and also you're like mental and physical health, to me, number one, number one, you, you, you can't take care of somebody else. You have to always take care of yourself first. You put the mask on on the plane first, you know? Yep. You take care of you. And if that means stopping trying to have a baby in whatever way that is, you stop. You have to do what works for you. Absolutely. Yeah. And, 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 and sort of last question here, Hani. I mean, you and I are having this conversation and we're having a series of conversations this week all about 
upcoming Mother's Day, which is this Sunday in the United States. And I'm curious for you what you do on Mother's Day or what don't you do on Mother's Day? How how do you mark the day? Is it, you know, do you just crawl under your covers and forget about it? Do you spend the time with your own mother or celebrating her? I don't know if she's, I don't know where she lives. I don't know if she's in Denver or in Brooklyn or wherever it is, um, or, you know, your mother-in-law. Like how, how does the day sit for you? What do you, what do you do with it? Okay. So it definitely always starts with calling my mother, calling my mother-in-law, everybody, you like, unless somehow like you can't, whatever reason, get that out of the way. Uh, um, <laughs> um, yeah. My, my mom is in Boca. My mother-in-law's here in Denver. And like, sometimes we'll, we'll definitely go visit. Um, I say I'm generally off of social media cause I don't need it in my face. Um, and there's definitely parts like, um, or areas in Denver that I won't go to because I know it's a very like brunchy, you know, you'll see all the moms with the flowers and like, there's no reason I need to be there that Sunday. I don't need to go out to eat on Sunday when everybody, they're having the Mother's Day specials or whatever they're doing. I'll skip that day of yep. going out to eat. Um, and so, but generally like a regular Sunday, doing errands, running around. Um, and um, I think you just have to like, if if mothers i used to think like hashem planned this out really well because it's like right after pesach and if you can handle pesach you can handle mother's day in my humble of opinions um <laughs> <laughs> so true right. so true okay not not every year is it like this sometimes right. pesach is in march and then you know mother's day is not for another six weeks but this year it happens to be yes yeah exactly so um i i, I think that if whatever you have to do what works for you for me it's it's just living my regular life but like not going to the places that are going to be hardcore you know mother's day stuff all around me um and if where you are and that's constant everywhere like stay home like it's a few hours um and not to take away from people who get triggered by mother's day i get, I get it but get off of social media like don't oh. have it because it will be all over social media it'll be all the pictures on your facebook and your instagram like just just don't be on it why why bother yep um and so but i, I mean i still like call your mother call your mother-in-law like do that stuff because like they they like it so <laughs> right I, I was gonna say or or the other you know maybe maybe the you know your sister your sister-in-law whatever it is or your friends like get get the th get your obligations i love this like i love your idea like get your obligations out of the way and then you know you can go hide or do whatever your regular normal routine is but get your obligations out of the way first yeah um, i would say though for for people on here who have people in their lives um who are dealing with this i know some people say Oh, give them a call or send them something as like you're thinking about them. And I think for some people that is great. And I know there are, I know people like that who appreciate that. I am one of those people who would not. Um, I don't, I don't need to be reminded of it or anything, but that's my own thing. And I think you just have to know you are a person. And if your person appreciates those, like, oh, I'm thinking of you today and it must be hard or whatever those people exist and you have to just know your person. Um, and like, I'm just not that person, but cause of the hate, like, I mean, do that for your people. Amazing. Um, lastly, how, um, what do you, what do you suggest for the, for the fathers or the would be fathers in the world? Um, you know, skipping ahead a month, father's day is coming. How does, how does Dave handle it? Does he also like, just like, you know, shy away from all the things? Um, do you, do you like, what is he, has he expressed what he likes during those days or, or doesn't like during those days? Um, first thing we should do a live with him. I think that would be amazing because he's brilliant and amazing. Okay. Um, shout out to Dave. Um, you're hereby invited. So let's talk. Okay. Great. great. Um, I think, I mean, Again, of course, call and father, call and father-in-law, important, um, or whatever father you have in your life. Um, and I, the same thing. Um, I just, um, 
I mean, I like, I, we don't bring it up in a way. Um, like, it's just another day. Um, and again, we're not like, I won't go to the pizza shop, the deli, like where, you know, the restaurants that you have, who it's, you know, plastered all over. Um, we'll do our regular routine. And that's it. Um, I mean, it's been, I don't, I don't remember like a year yeah. ago. What was too long? Like, yeah. Um, but I, I think it'll be, we'll be doing the same thing like we we're going to do Mother's Day. That it's just going to be like a regular day. Um, and I mean, I also do believe every day should be like Mother's Day and every day mothers should be celebrated and blah, all that. <laughs> blah, 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 but, whatever. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah. And I, I think that's great. And I think people, you know, when, if you're a mom or you're, you want to be celebrated, like, do it. Like, great. I love it. Um, I also think like when it's your birthday, your mom should be celebrated and not you. Like she did all the hard work. Um, so <laughs> I'm all for celebrating, um, you know, your loved ones in your life, no matter what day it is. Oh, you're so sparkly now. I, I look, you know, oh gosh, look at that. I wonder how that happened. Wow. Okay. I, I, I'm not intending to be sparkly, so I have no I idea thought, how that you're great. For some reason, all of my, my entire video now, I'm like sparkling everywhere. So um, I think we need to end the live before I sparkle too much. Um, anyway, Hani, um, thank you so much for sharing a bit of your life, sharing a bit of your words, of your, your strength, your chizuk to parents out there, would-be parents, to current parents, to people who are struggling. Um, it, it helps to, for people to hear about what is going on um, internally for people who are still hoping to be parents. And I'm, I'm so grateful to you. And um, Dave, this is an official shout out. Um, I expect to see you in about a month. So we're, we, we will schedule that. Fantastic. Well, thank you for having me. Um, I don't know if I said anything profound or anything, but um, if it somehow helped anybody, happy to be here. Anything for you, Amy, anytime. You have a fantastic organization and just call it vote to you for everything that you do. Uh, look, you, you a thousand percent shared, you shared from your heart and that's, that's what people want to hear. They want to hear how, how you do it because there are so many people out there struggling and they take their strength. They take Chizuk from people like you who are visible on social media, who are sharing their lives in this incredibly positive and beautiful way so many people take strength from you so i, I really this is my pleasure my pleasure um so much and uh maybe see each other in israel in two seconds with uh, amen 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 okay good night everybody good night